Oh, look at you, right on time. I love that about you. I'm John Zadar, I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Monday, January 9th. Now on this show, I like to bring you hot OTC and penny stocks. I'm out there all day trading them, I'm seeing a lot of activity, and I like to bring you a handful of at the end of the day. Now we do trade OTC stocks as well as penny stocks and they're not the same. A penny stock is any stock under five bucks regardless of what market it's on and there's a lot of advantages to trading these major exchange penny stocks. They're free to trade, no transaction fees. You've got all the money on the major markets. You can trade them pre-market and after market and you know what else I like? Sorry to say this, folks, but the major exchanges are centralized. They're not like the OTC market, which is decentralized. Decentralized means there's just not a lot of oversight. There's more cooks in the kitchen than we need. And I prefer the safety of the major exchanges. Nonetheless, I do do a lot of research on OTC stocks. Matter of fact, all that news right there, that comes from the OTC market. You got your oldest stuff at the top, newest stuff down here at the bottom, and this is real good news. I've read all of this. These are your mergers, acquisitions, new deals, uplistings, bankruptcies, dividends, all that juicy sort of news that really does get the stocks moving. So if you haven't had time to go through the news, check it out. I've already done all the work for you. Now, when I do research on OTC stocks specifically, this is my go-to site right here, the otcmarkets.com website. The primary reason, it's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. Folks, these are the people that have all that pertinent, important information we're constantly looking for. And if you're constantly going out to the internet to do your searching, you're wasting a lot of time. You might as well come here. That is what the site is for, the investors. They try to keep this information as current as possible without any hype. I love it. So let's take a look at how the OTC market finished today. It looks a little bit better, and that's before I refresh this. Come on, baby. Okay, some improvement is better than no improvement. We were way down in our dollar volume last week, I think at 1.3 billion. We're getting close to 2 billion, which is really when the heat starts up. We're at 1.8. Share volume, we got out of 4 billion, which is where we were at last week. That was desperately sad. We are now at 7.7 .7 billion. Not a whole lot to get excited about, but we do want to see it coming up. Speaking of coming up, here we go again. We are lifting our trades. We've been running between 250 and 300,000 for a very long time. We've been over 300,000 a few times, but we just can't stay there. And right now we're at 281,000, pushing forward again. Fingers crossed we get there. We do need a break on the OTC market. All right, I've got some stocks I want to share with you today. Some you've heard of, some you haven't, but they're all interesting and I think they have the potential to make us some money. Let me show you what I got. I'm willing to bet you don't need an introduction to this company, but I'll give it to you anyways. This is b b b b bye well, how do you pronounce sticker B-B-B-Y? This is Bed Bath & Beyond. Now, surprisingly, she had a good day with all the dark clouds that have been hovering over this company for a while. She finished the day at $1.62 with almost 24% gains. Now, this is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. She is still on the NASDAQ right now, but there is a lot happening threatening that position. First off, they are looking at bankruptcy. They've been looking at that for quite a while, and rumor has it they could be filing the paperwork for it in the next couple of weeks. I know it's not good, but believe it or not, that would probably cause the stock to run. Now, tragedy hit this company just a few months ago. There was a lawsuit that was brought up by one of the investors for $1.2 billion. He was suing JP Morgan and the CFO of this company. He was claiming that the two were conspiring in a pump and dump scheme with the stock. And immediately after that, the CFO jumped out of an 18-story window and committed suicide. So the company's had a lot of bad press here recently. And tomorrow, they're supposed to 
to be reporting their financials. Now they just filed a late filing. Five days ago they said we're not going to be able to file these on time. We need five more days. And that's what they got. Tomorrow is the fifth day and they're supposed to report these before market opens. Now I don't expect the financials to be better than they've been for the last few quarters or the last few years. I think the company is in trouble. But the stock still ran. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, she's normally doing about 12 and a half million. Today she did 88 million shares. There's excitement around this dark puppy. Share structure. All right, outstanding share count. We got 80 million. I did go look this up. I believe the float is around 75 million. Financials for the company. Now this is funny. When you hear the word bankruptcy, you think broke no money they're cash poor well that's not always the case normally it just means they've got a lot of debt and it hasn't been structured properly and it could topple the company if they don't fix it you can see here they do have revenues coming in but they have been falling prior to covid through covid right up to now back in 2019 they were at 12 billion dollars we know that's billions because we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers down here but through COVID, they went to 11 billion, 9 billion, and right now they're at 7.8 billion. I know it sounds like a lot of money, but they're going through it like water. Look at their balance sheet here. Total current assets is $5.1 billion. Total liabilities is $4.9 billion. That leaves them with under $200,000 in assets. They are just teetering on the edge right now. Disclosures. All right, they have had a couple disclosures here. First off, this 8K that just came out four days ago, this was supposed to be an exchange of senior notes, but they're not gonna do that. They've canceled it. They got too much on their plate right now. And as I said, they did file four or five days ago, the NT10Q. You can just think of that NT as not. We're not filing our 10Q on time. And if you're doing this with a quarterly, it'll buy you five days. If you do it with a 10K, your annual, it'll buy you 15 days. So what was the news around the company today? I don't think they had any. I don't think there was anything here. Bed Bath & Beyond jumps 32% just ahead of earnings. And that's really all we got is anticipation. But like I said, I don't anticipate anything to be better. What I anticipate is for them to file bankruptcy. That is probably gonna cause the stock to jump because it's just what's been happening. And then they'll get kicked off of the NASDAQ. It'll bounce just before it leaves the NASDAQ. Then when it hits the OTC market, give it a day or two to dust off, and I bet you it bounces again. This has been happening over and over again. So that's why we're watching this new bankruptcy play that's coming into the picture. And everybody knows Bed, Bath, and Beyond. So we'll have a lot of watchers. Let's go take a look at that chart. So we're taking a look at b b b buy ticker b b b y bed bath and beyond, and of course we're doing all of our charting on Think or Swim. This is my free trading platform, actually my only trading platform. I got it from TD Ameritrade when I signed up for their free trading account. So can you. You don't have to give them any deposit. You actually don't even have to trade with them. Just keep your account open, and you can use TOS anytime you like, absolutely free. So we are looking at Bed Bath & Beyond, six month, four hour chart. She basically has been falling all of this time, except for right here in August. This was a wild run. Now there was a lot going on in this time period. This is when the announcement of the lawsuit came out. This is when the suicide occurred. And I've got to presume that's on the backside of this huge run. And this run started at the beginning of August, under five bucks and went to $30. Folks, that is over 600% run. But since then, she has been falling all this time, hitting a low bubble just the other day of $1.27. For the last two days before today, she has been falling really hard from 243 down to that 127 almost 50 percent and right now she is turning around trying to recover we've had a lot of volume come in today and look at our technicals here's our macd we got a crossover right now crossing over already done it pushing up got our first green bar on the board 
RSI hasn't got a whole lot going on for it right now. But what stands out to me is the pattern you see right here. Kind of looks like a milk bottle. You see how both of these lines are the same? Well, in the PPO, my price percentage oscillator, very much like the MACD, you read it the same way, when that blue line is coming down and the ADX, my trend continuation line, is coming up like this and they're coming to a point, you know the price is falling, guaranteed. Follow my line up. Right where these two lines start coming together is when the price started to fall, without a doubt. And when it started to go up is when they started to pull apart from each other and spread. So this is a very good technical to keep your eye on. Right now it says the price wants to go up. 20 day, one hour view. All right, she's been falling all of this time. Started off 20 days ago at $3.45 with the 50 day coming under the 200 day SMA and that was it. She's been falling ever since then pretty much under a 50 day SMA as well. Had a pop here with about 25% pre-market but gave it all away before the bell even rang and continued falling. Then we had that huge drop here and the bounce back. And right now it seems like she's holding just about 50% of the gains that she took early in the morning but doesn't want to go anywhere. She's kind of locked up right now waiting for these financials tomorrow morning. All of our technicals have just started going flatline to the right. <laughs> and our five day, five minute chart. So we had a high back here of $3.15 pre-market. She has been falling down to that low. Went really strong sideways. I mean, had no activity yesterday. Big bounce early this morning. That jumped from $1.33 up to $2.29. That's not a bad run, but she gave it all away before the bell rang. Had a nice pop after the bell, but has come back down and is laying, I mean strictly laying on top of that 200-day SMA right now. It has gotten over the 50-day SMA, but the 50-day SMA looks like it's about ready to cross the 200, which isn't a good sign. Our technicals, well, our MACD is climbing here for the last part of the day. Our PPO and our ADX, again, they look like they're trying to separate. And now we've actually got some strength on our RSI. From about the back half of the day to the end of the day, she has been growing from the basement floor of 30 all the way up to 57. So she has a chance of growing, folks. Now, as I said, I don't anticipate our financials to be good tomorrow. So I'm not thinking this is going to run because, boom, we're going to get some big surprise. I think everything is still dark and negative. It's just that she's going to fit the mold of all the stocks that run. She's going to be going bankrupt. She's going to get kicked off the NASDAQ. She's going to fall down to the OTC. I can't see the future, but this has kind of been looming for a long time, and it looks like it's about ready to happen. So playing one of those contrary plays, this would be it. BBBY. Very popular. Everybody knows it. Big name. I'm sure most people think they can come out of bankruptcy, and most of these big names do. That is the truth. They've got branding. They've been around for a long time. They generate a lot of money. Nobody wants to see them die. So I'd watch BBBY for a pop, a nice strong surge before she falls again. This next stock we're looking at, it too, is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is ticker APGN, Apaxigen Inc. This is a biotech company that had what I would call a lukewarm catalyst today. It's a catalyst that a lot of stocks get, but not a lot of stocks move on this particular catalyst. Not only did the stock run though, her warrant ran as well. Now, being on the major exchange, most of the stocks there, not all of them, but most of them have warrants. Warrants are stocks you can trade, you can make your money, get in and get out, no difference. However, they have the advantage of being able to be used later in the future. You can cash them in to buy shares of the stock at a much discounted rate than the current price at the time. Well, warrants normally run faster and farther on less volume when news comes out. And that was the case today with this company. Now, this company came onto the market back in August. They did a reverse merger with a SPAC. 
And that's how they got onto the NASDAQ. And their biggest news came out back in November. Uh, Paxigen announces new data from phase one, two trial. The combination of their two drugs was well tolerated and demonstrated an improved clinical response rate relative to standard care. They are working on anti-tumor responses in both local as well as distant tumor lesions. And that's their big news. That is the biggest news they've had in a while except for today. What happened today? Well, they got a new coverage. Someone is covering the stock, someone you know, E.F. Hutton. When E.F. Hutton talks, people listen. And that seems to be the case. E.F. Hutton initiates coverage on Apexogen with a buy rating announcing a price target of $8. Did you see what the price was today, folks? $1.80. That's where she finished. I think she was at 80 cents when she started, which means our price target was a thousand percent up from what the price was. Now, price targets come out every day for stocks, and most of them don't get any attention. The reason? A price target is only as good as the people giving it. E.F. Hutton is somebody people know, so they respect that. Matter of fact, if you look, this isn't the first good price target they've gotten. The first analysts offering 12-month price forecast for a Paxigen Inc. have a medium target of $11, a high target of $11, and a low estimate of $11. And they say down here the new price target is $8. So we have got multiple people, Brooklyn Capital Management, EF Hutton Acquisition, and Roth Capital covering this stock. But four days ago, EF Hutton came out and said this stock is worth eight dollars why he said that I have no clue they don't go and break it all down for us they just tell us after they've done their DD so the stock was moving today simply based on that price target as far as I can tell so what was the relative volume around the stock today well she's no oh my god wow she's normally only doing 32,000 shares a day definitely under the radar and being ignored <laughs> Today, she did almost 100 million shares, 94 million shares. That is an incredible jump, folks. On the uh, warrant, what sort of relative volume did she have? Not as big, but huge. It jumped from 6,000 shares up to almost a million. On the APGN, what is the share structure on this? All right, I did look this up. I could not find a float anywhere. I mean, nowhere. No floats, not high, not low. I just couldn't find one. So I know that the float is going to be less than 6.7 million. So I can say with confidence, it is a low float, a very low float, which helps the stock to move fast. Financials for a Pexagen. Gotta hate saying that name. Um, they got nothing. Nothing on the yearly basis. Got anything quarterly? Whoa. We got no money coming in at all since the company's been on the market. Balance sheet for the company. Total assets, we got $27.5 million. Total liability, 17. So they are left with about $10.5 million in assets. So at least they're on the right side of the board there. And disclosures. What do we have that's current? Ooh, we got lots of Form 4s, and I actually haven't taken a look at any of these. I'm going to pop into one or two here. Form 4s are filings that the insiders, the management, have to make whenever they buy or sell shares. This is common stock from the chief executive officer. He sold, it's in red there, he sold 7,001 shares at $1.06. Taking a look at another one, let's check this one out. These all came out the same day. Oh boy, Chief Operating Officer sold another 7,000 right here. And we'll look at that very top one. This isn't looking good. Um, the SVP Finance and Operations Officer sold 2,800 of them, all at $1.06. So on December 19th, we did have some sales going on there, which isn't a great thing to see. Not a lot of shares, but they were selling some. Now, maybe they had good reason. Maybe they had to put food in the refrigerator or gas in the car. I don't know. But there was some small sales going on. And I've already shown you the news. There's not a whole lot more news to look at. Matter of fact, there's no more news to look at.
So that's what's going on. We got a new price target and it excited everybody. And going from 80 cents to $8 is a huge jump. And she's still got about 850% to go if she wants to hit it. And I'll tell you, in many cases, I do see prices go all the way up to those price targets and they'll fall short by about 10%. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this stock actually run to $7.20. Now it doesn't make sense, does it? We didn't see any revenues there. We don't see any new catalysts. The insiders are selling shares. So why should it rise? Because E.F. Hutton says so. <laughs> Let's go look at that chart. We're going to take a look at both of these charts for the common stock and the warrant. So let's start off with that common stock. This is ticker APGN. This is a six month, four hour chart. Now I told you back in July, the company came onto the NASDAQ market through a reverse merger with a SPAC, a special purpose acquisition company. Now SPAC sell their shares at $10 a share and that's what they're worth. That's what you see here, $10 until they close a deal. Now we can bid the price up and down, but most people don't because it's only worth $10. If this company failed to do a deal within their 18 to 24 months, they got to give back all that money to their shareholders and you only get back $10. So if you happen to bid $10.50 for your share, you're only going to get $10 back if they fail to consummate a deal. So it was right here, the deal was consummated and this is when she jumped from $10 up to about 34 bucks. 340% gains here. And then she gave it all away and crashed without any cause. We don't see any bad news. There's no bankruptcy. What we do see is a lack of revenues and that may be the cause. She has been falling ever since then to a low about five days ago of 61 cents. And it was four days ago that EF Hutton came out with that $8 price target. One, two, three, four. So it came out four days ago. It was three days ago she had her initial bounce hit hard. She jumped from 64 cents up to a dollar two and then fell and has been growing ever since. Lots of volume came in today. And our technicals, they show she still wants to grow, folks. Look at our PPO. It has been climbing for two days straight. Our ADX is lovely. That straight line tells me that the trend is not changing direction. As long as that line goes in the same direction, it don't matter if it's up or down, as long as it doesn't change direction, it means my trend is not going to change direction. Even though I see that red bar right there, this tells me it has the strength to continue on. Our MACD has been climbing for three days, has crossed the signal line and still pushing up. And our RSI was hot and she's falling right up underneath the overbought at about 66 right now. So we do have a lot of power building up on the four hour chart. 20 day, one hour view. Not a whole lot going on except for bouncing off of that low bubble. She has been pushing off it at 61 cents and hit a high of $2.41. 400% gains there folks in four days. She has started to fall here in aftermarket. It looks like she is still continuing her fall and all of our technicals are starting to turn around right now. You can see that everything is starting to push down on the hourly. Five day, five minute. So we had our run for the last four days. Yesterday, she took off after market. She jumped from 89 cents up to $1.70, almost 100% gains. Had lots of bouncing going on pre-market this morning. Hit a high today of $2.41, and she did that at quarter after 10. Ran a little bit longer. I normally get out of a stock at 10 o'clock in the morning. If I see it running early, what time did this hit this high? That was at 9.55. If I had gotten into this stock and she was running this hard, I would have gotten out right up here simply because of the clock. Not because I think it's going to fall, not because I think it's going to climb. I'm getting out because at 10, 10.05, the market takes a hesitation. Coin goes up in the air. Is it going to continue to climb or is it going to fall? I don't know and I don't care. I take my gains at 9.55 to 10.05 and I get out. Because this is what normally happens. You get a drop right after that period of time and in most cases, she continues to fall. Now, if she does continue to climb, all right, I missed out on something. But I didn't lose anything. You don't go broke leaving money on the table. You go broke by not taking your gains. She came down 
bounced off of that 50, struggled with her 50 for a while, came down here and tagged, virtually tagged the 200, bounced above that 50 day again, and now is right on top of that 200 day SMA. And we got the 50 day coming down on top of it. Our technicals actually show she's struggling right now. We got a crossover on our PPO trying to come back up while our ADX is falling. Remember, when the PPO is going up and the ADX is going down, it means the price intends to go up. So we do see an indication here. Our MACD, it is trying to push up, but it's struggling right now to get enough power. And our RSI is very tempted at 45 right now, not doing a whole lot. I don't know if this is going to run to $7.20. I don't know if it's going to go any further, but I do know that people listen to E.F. Hutton. That is a name that bears respect, and most price targets are ignored because they come from people nobody's ever heard of. Who cares what you think? But J.P. Morgan, E.F. Hutton, these sort of people people listen to. So I would watch APGN tomorrow as well as the warrant. Let's take a look at that warrant. So this is the warrant APGNW six month, four hour chart. Now the neat thing about warrant stocks is that they are tradable once they hit the market, unlike the SPACs. So when news comes out where they're speculating a deal sometime in the future, you're not gonna see the SPAC move. You're gonna see the warrant move. With little volume, it will run hard and fast. So this was trading before the company hit the NASDAQ. When they came on the NASDAQ, this was at about 15 cents and it ran up to $1.20. You're looking at 800% run on that news. Then when she came down, she crashed just like the stock did, kept falling until she hit this low bubble, what, five days ago, just over two cents. Today she hit a high of 20 cents. Folks, you're looking at like 900% run in the last four to five days. She broke that 200 today, but she has fallen back and she's sitting over top of her 50 day SMA right now with the nine day crossing it. Lots of volume came in today. Technicals are pretty strong. We got a good solid crossover here on our PPO today. Our ADX is continuing in a straight line showing me that my trend is continuing. MACD is powerful. This is a tsunami. Look at all those green bars still growing and our RSI is on fire. It's in the overbought section at 72 right now. Our 20 day, one hour view. Not a whole lot going on most of the time here. She was underneath the 50, hit that low bubble of just over two cents and then started to rock and roll. She hit that high today of 20 cents and has fallen back down and is right on top of her nine day SMA, which is a good place to be. You gotta stay on top of the nine if you want the price to climb. So it's in a great place over the 200 and our 50 is working its way up to that 200 right now. Our technicals show a lot of strength, but they look like they're in a hold position right now because things are going sideways. Five day, five minute. All right, so this is primarily today. Let's see where she started off. She closed yesterday at about 40 cents and she ran to that 20 cents before market even opened. So you're looking at roughly 500% gains if you were in it yesterday and got out before the bell rang. Market opened up, she did fall, started off down here at about nine cents and pretty much held that all day. She's at 9.7 cents right now. Just rolling across the board, cut through her 50 day SMA and is toying with that right now. Our technicals don't look like it wants to continue to grow. Our PPO has crossed underneath our pink and it's coming down. Our ADX is in a straight line with our price falling right now. Our MACD has gone under the signal line, under the pink line, and our RSI is falling as well. So the warrant took a nice run, had some gains to be given, so did the stock. Both of them were high, both came down a little bit, but both gave a lot away today. Now is this gonna continue tomorrow? I don't know, but I think it's worth a watch. When you can get two, three, four, eight, nine hundred percent gains in just a couple days, you've got to be putting that stock on your watch list. Last stock we're taking a look at is ticker NLST, Netlist Inc. Now the company hasn't had any new filings or fresh press releases since December. However, they have got potential of making literally 
billions of dollars, but not by doing business. Seems they have filed lots of patent infringement lawsuits against some major Fortune 500 companies like Samsung, Google, Micron, and we expect that they're going to get paid off. So the company finished the day at $1.65 with about 2.5% loss. She's on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB, where you have to audit your financials. That makes them more trustworthy, more transparent. They've got both those green ticks I'm always telling you to look for, the verified profile and the transfer agent. These are real important, especially if you're going to be in a stock for a long hold. There's a lot of important information that's represented by these green ticks that is being verified behind the scenes by the OTC markets, believe it or not. So if you're going to be in a company on the OTC market for a long hold, you want as much validated information as you can get. And that's what a transfer agent verified and a verified profile will get get you. They are also penny stock exempt. That's a bonus for us. What this means is that the company has been in business for three to five years with millions of dollars of assets and no problems with their filings. So they're ticking all the right boxes. They look good. So what does Netlist do? Well, looking at their description here, Netlist provides high performance, solid state drivers and modular memory solutions to enterprise customers in diverse industries. The company's NVMe SSDs in various capacities and form factors and the line of custom and specialty memory products bring industry leading performance to server and storage appliance customers and cloud service providers. Netless license its portfolio of intellectual property including patents and server memory, hybrid memory, storage class memory to companies that implement Netless technology. So they invent technology patent it and then license it out to other companies who want to incorporate it with their technology to make it run better. And if these companies don't get a license agreement, they're using it illegally and they're going to have to pay up if they're sued and the courts find in favor of the company. So let's get some more information here. Luckily, I found an article where they did a lot of good DD and we're going to be able to cash in on that right now. They tell us here that Netlist holds a portfolio of 130 patents issued in the U.S. and abroad. Their patent portfolio reflects their many years of research and development and track record of bringing disruptive new products to the market. Now, they have had a great last year in revenues. The first nine months of 2022, they did $140 million. Compared to the same period the year before, they only did $66 million. So they are definitely increasing their revenues. Now they tell us down here that while they are doing great in their revenues, kicking up from 66 to 140 million, that's not where the potential is. That's not what everybody's eyes are on. They tell us here that uh, the more exciting part of Netless business is its patent infringement lawsuits against Samsung, Micron, Google and others. And they expect that this could be bigger than some of the biggest we have ever seen. We've seen one between Intel and VLSI technology for $2.1 billion. There was another lawsuit between Pfizer and Teva Pharmaceuticals, which was also $2.1 billion. And that's the sort of payout that they are expecting. They tell us here that on June 2020, Netless was victorious in a 12-year battle battle in the patent courts against Google. A three-judge panel at the U.S. Court of Appeals in a unanimous Rule 36 decision upheld the decision of the lower court and found in favor of Netlist. Google waived their appeal rights to the SCOTUS and the 912 patent was reissued with 78 claims upheld. But that's not the end of it. You would think, okay, Google's been found guilty. How much do they get? No, there's actually more to it than that. Uh, they found out that uh, it was Samsung that had supplied the patent infringing memory modules to Google. So the judges decided that they are going to wait on the Netlist Samsung case to be decided before they give an ultimate decision on the Google one.
However, they do tell us that since then, Netlist won another lawsuit with SK Hynix in a deal that included a $40 million signing bonus, $600 million supply agreement at advantageous terms, a patent sharing agreement that gives Netlist access to Hynix portfolio of 5,000 patents for free of charge. And now, after all of that, Hynix and Netlist are partners. They are working together. Isn't it nice to have everything come together? Now, they tell us that this case against Google is going to be in court uh, May 27th, and the journey trial will begin May 1st. And all eyes are going to be on that, folks. Google is huge. Micron is big. Samsung is gigantic. Any one of these are found guilty, we could see a lot of money pour into this company. And that's what everybody is really watching. So taking a look at their relative volume, see what sort of attention they were getting today? Not much. She's normally doing 666,000 shares a day. Today she did just a wee bit more, 725,000. Still under the radar, not getting a lot of attention yet. Share structure for NLST. Had to look this one up, and they're close. They said here it's 228 million. Google tells me over and over again it's 225 million. Either way, it's a pretty high float. Looking at her disclosures, we do have a file form here, another one of those filings for the insiders buying or selling shares. This one too is selling. This is the vice president, the CFO. He has sold 8,000, 2,700, and 1,500 shares for whatever reason. We don't know. And taking a look at the news. All right, Netlist receives favorable claim construction order against Samsung in U.S. District Court for Eastern District of Texas. This came out mid-December, and this is when we get our date for when they are going to be going to court in May. That is when it came out, and that's really what everyone is waiting for. Between now and then, I don't know how much the price is going to move, honestly. So to sum it up, We've got a company here that is currently trading at $350 million market cap. Netlist has a strong balance sheet. They've got $43 million in cash and restricted cash, $77 million in assets, $38 million in liabilities, and the company does not dilute its stock. That's always a plus. Netlist has been reporting one record-breaking quarter after another as the company's semiconductor business has more than doubled over the past year. The upside on Netlist is an enormous aggregate of the multiple infringement lawsuits Netlist is pursuing, which could well yield among the largest patent infringement settlements in history, and we could see multiple resolutions in 2023. So we are looking at multiple companies that could give us billions of dollars each. We don't know. I mean, we're just throwing numbers out there. Who's to say? But that's what everybody is waiting for. And that will make a difference in the company. And I think it's going to make a difference in the stock price as well. Let's go take a look at that chart. So this is NLST six month, four hour chart. We got a high back here six months ago of $6.65. She has broken through the 200 a couple times on her way down and has settled down here at a low bubble of 76 cents at the beginning of December. And she's been bouncing off of that ever so slowly, but she's working her way up. And over the last four or five days, she's taken a jump from $1.15 up to $1.82. You're looking at 56 percent gains. She is working it. She's working it well. She's staying on top of her nine-day SMA, well above her 50, trying to get close to that 200. Our technicals do show some strength. Since she started the climb off of her 50-day SMA, we have got a push off of our PPO and our MACD, and our RSI right now is at 66, not looking too bad on the four-hour. 20-day, one-hour, looks even better. There's our low bubble of 76 cents. She bounced off of that really hard. From 76 cents up to $1.50, you got almost 100% gains there. Cracked our 200-day SMA, fell down to our 50-day. You can see she stuck between the two, 
pushed again and launched herself up onto that 200. Has been wrestling that 200 this entire time until the last four days when she started to climb. And I don't know why she's climbing. You know as much as I know. So she hit that high yesterday of $1.82 and right now she is at $1.66, $1.65. Our technicals are showing some pullback right now on the hourly. Everything is starting to curve down. Five day, five minute. Well, that doesn't look too bad at all. Most of this she has been climbing, respecting that 50 day SMA. You can see her bouncing off of that all the way up till she hit her high bubble. Then she gave it up, fell through her 50, bounced off of that 200 and is wrestling everything right now. All of our SMAs are in a knot right here. Really can't tell what's going on. Our technicals tell us that she is negotiating. She's got a crossover on her PPO and she's gotten above the signal line on the MACD, but it doesn't look like there's a whole heck of a lot of strength here right now. This is one we're watching, folks. They haven't had any new news or new filings, new business deals, anything like that. They've got some great technology. They are making good revenues. Revenues are increasing, but I think everybody's really got their eye on these lawsuits billions of dollars potentially coming in from any or all of them which could really add up to a windfall so nlst could be a somewhat of a long hold a few months at least until may when they go into court against google and hopefully samsung's decision is finished by then as well so nlst it could explode in a few months don't forget to put it on your watch list in my personal opinion, I think these three stocks have got more gains to give us. B -b -b Buy, ticker BBBY, Bed Bath and Beyond, I do believe is going to fall off the NASDAQ once they file bankruptcy and they're going to end up down here at the OTC market. And being such a big popular company, there's going to be a lot of people watching this. So I fully expect to see multiple bounces from this company. Then we have ticker APGN and it's warrant, APGNW. This is the biotech that just got the price target of $8. Already jumped from 80 cents to what, $1.80? Is it gonna go more? I don't know, but I've seen this before, especially when big names put these price targets out. They said $8. I have seen these things go just shy of the price target. 10% normally, I don't know why. That would take it to $7.20. That would be a huge gain on this. So I would take APGN and the warrant, APGNW, put it on your watch list for this week. Keep a good eye on it. And then Netlist. Yeah, they're making great money. They've got really good technology and they have got some lawsuits that could bring them billions of dollars from multiple companies each. So this is huge. We've got to wait until May. That is when the jury trial begins. But all of these, all of these have potential as long as you put them on your watch list and don't miss them. Remember folks, due diligence is fun. You find a lot of treasures. The more you know, the more you're gonna grow. See ya.